Good morning, my dear students. In the second part of my lecture on waste assessment characterization uh, survey, I'm going to help you go through the processing of wax data you have gathered by giving you examples in the computation of total and percentages of each waste type, the per capita generation rate, and the total domestic waste. Then I will expound more on the significance of wax in waste management planning. Now in this slide, you see the data sheet on wax. Since you have surveyed for seven days, you are going to get the total of each waste subtype. For example, each of the components of compostable or biodegradable waste. <coughs> then add all the total of each component to get the total of the waste type, this time it's the total of the compostable or biodegradable waste. And then add all the subtotal of each waste type to get the overall total waste generated for seven days. Now, to get the percentage per waste type, you are going to divide the subtotal type by the overall total and multiply by 100. Okay. Let us take an example. You see here that the overall total is 113.35 kilograms. To get the percent compostable, you are going to multiply the total of compostable, which is 65.20, by 113.35 and then multiply it by 100. In our example, there is 57.52% of compostable or biodegradable waste. Next is the uh, computation of the per capita waste generation rate. The word per capita means per person. So in our example, each individual uh, here in our example, uh, we have to take into consideration the total number of days surveyed and the total individual population of surveyed households. Example, you have seven days, then you have total of 50 persons in four households surveyed. The total waste generated uh, in kilograms we had as our example was 113.35 kilograms. So we are going to divide this by seven days, and we get 16.19 kilogram per day. And then that 16.19 uh, kilogram will now be divided by 50 persons, and you get 0 0.32 kilogram per person per day. So that means that each individual produces 32 grams or 0 0.32 kilograms of waste per day because uh, per capita means per person. Now, let us compute the total domestic waste. Our example here shows that the total population of the municipality is 94,037. We will now multiply the per capita of 0 0.32 kilograms by 94,037, and we get 30,000. 91.84 kilogram per day. This means that the municipality is generating 30 tons of waste per day. Now, this is now a uh, further discussion of the significance of wax in the barangay or municipal waste management. Of course, through the wax data, we are able to compute for the per capita generation rate and the total domestic waste. The WAX data can also provide answers to some questions that have to be considered in planning the ecological solid waste management. Questions like, what does the data tell us of the characteristic of the barangay or municipality? Because in the World Health Organization 1996 uh, reference, it says there that if the per capita generation rate is half kilo, per person per day, that means that uh, area, that municipality is already urbanized. But if it is below that, uh, say for example, 0 0.30 to 0 0.40 kilograms per person per day, nasa rural pa yung 
uh, barangay or municipality. Another question is what waste type is most produced? What is the percentage of the particular waste type to the total waste produced? What sector produces the most waste? Must all the amount of waste be disposed of at the facility? How are we going to transfer this amount of waste to the disposed facility? Which type and amount can be reduced? What amount can be composted? Do we have a composting facility? Which or what amount can be recycled? Which should finally be disposed of in the disposal facility? Do we have the right facility to com accommodate all the amount of waste? And what should the proper way of disposing hazardous waste? Do we have the facility? Okay. Here we have an example of wax data. You will see in the table the, to the total for each subtype of compostables and the total and percentage contribution of each waste source. So from the data, you will see that the garden waste and the fruit and vegetable scrap comprise the bulk of the compostables. Mm. So pinakamarami ang fruit, vegetable scrap, then the garden waste, while the least are the mixed compostables. And then In this table, you will see that the bottles or glass comprise the bulk of the recyclable waste. No? You have uh, 281.77 kilograms followed by paper and paper products, 259.48. So you see, you are able to determine which of the recyclables are the most produced. Tapos, meron tayong mga plastic wrappers, plastic bottles, konti lang naman, tetra packs, etc. Also, metals and others, depending on the material you have uh, gathered during your survey. Okay. From the overall total, you will see in the table that the residential or household source contributes the greatest amount of the overall waste generated. This uh, was taken from another survey conducted in Katarman, uh, probably it was in 2015. So you have the overall total of 5,315.75. Uh, remember that is that this is on the per day basis. No? So yung pinakamarami ay yung from households, you know, then followed from the waste, waste uh, from the market, then uh, from the commercial establishments, institutional, and the list, of course, was from the clinics and hospitals. Okay. We now compute for the percentage composition of waste. Uh, uh, I mean, you can illustrate from the data you can make graphs to illustrate the percentage composition of waste produced. So, madali lang tingnan. Kay, uh, you can present the, your data from the table in, in graphs. No? Also, the waste produced and disposed per sector. So, from the graph, you can see that it is the residential waste that is the most abundant. You know, yung pinakamarami, pinakamalaki in the pie chart followed by the one from the market then uh, the commercial from the commercial establishment so this is another way of presenting your data you know in this table you can present it in graphs now let us go back to some of our questions why are we going to put where are we going to put all this waste do we have the facility that can accommodate this amount now, if we, if even if we have the facility, if we put all this amount, how long would the facility be useful? How many years will it be able to accommodate the amount of waste daily? That would overwhelm the facility. So, don't we need to reduce and divert some of them, which can be reduced, which can be recycled? At ano naman yung itatapo na lang, ididispose na doon sa disposal facility. Now, I'm going to show you 
that if we are going to make an ecological solid waste management plan, we will know what to do with all the waste and where would those wastes go. Now, this is actually what RA9003 wants us to do, so that we will not be producing so much waste and will not, be over, and will not over, overwhelm our disposal facility. So, tingnan natin ano ang mangyayari sa biodegradable waste, which is comprised of 42.15% of the total waste generated. Now, this comes from residential, commercial, institutional, market, and hospital. Remember, these are biodegradable waste. Now, we de reduce 8,270 kilograms per day from the biodegradable waste which have to be composted by households and barangay levels in their eco-gardens, sa backyard, or if, for example, the barangay has a, an eco-garden for the whole barangay. So, nabawas na yung uh, 8.2 tons na eco-compost. You know? Then, the rest of the uh, compostable materials, that is 7.3 tons per day will be uh, transferred to the municipal composting facility and can be used in organic farms. So for example, if the municipality is maintaining an organic farm, what is composted in the municipal composting facility can be used in the organic farm. Now, next, we have the recyclable waste. Remember that the recyclable waste is 21.58% of the total waste. This also comes from the residential, commercial, institutional, market, and hospitals and clinics. So what are we going to do with the recyclable? We reduce 89.6%, that is 7.1 tons of uh, waste, you know, 7.1 ton kilogram per day that uh, can be sold to junk shop owners and operators. So, imagine na bawas yung 7.1 uh, tons kasi i-recycle na. Ano? Then, the remaining uh, recyclable waste uh, can now be collected by the municipal uh, garbage collector but then, this will be further processed in the barangay or the cluster MRFs or the central MRF. Konti na lang ang ipaprocess. Ano? Now, from this one, meron tayong mga collectors. In the case of Kataman, for example, meron ng mga collectors or wage segregators at the central MRF and they are the ones who collect this and at the same time, after collecting, uh, they also sell them to the junk shop owners and operators. So, ilan na yung nabawas? Ano? Hindi pa tayo nagdi-dispose. Bawas pa lang. Reduce, reduce, reduce. You know? Kasi hindi dapat, hindi dapat lahat i-dispose sa uh, disposal facility. Now, what are we going to do with the residual waste and the special waste? Kasi ito na lang sila dapat ang mapupunta sa ating disposal facility. Okay. Now, this also comes from the residential, commercial, institutional market, and then all of the residual waste will have to be collected to be disposed at the disposal facility. And if we have a sanitary landfill, sa sanitary landfill na ang pagsak ng lahat ng residual waste. Then, with the special waste, remember, you have the bulk waste and the hazardous waste also coming from all these sources. So, these are all collected, 100% din, i-collect siya to be disposed at the residual containment area or RCA and the septic tank vault in the case of the hazardous waste. Now, in instances where the municipality has not yet uh, constructed its sanitary landfill, the National Solid Waste Management Commission, uh, through the monitoring of the Environmental Management Bureau, allows the use of the residual containment area. That's why, in the case of Katarman, uh, nakasako, yung mga, nakasako yung mga basura because these are put in the residual contain, 
containment area uh, while the sanitary landfill is still being constructed. So, now, ito lahat, so you, you will notice that only a very small amount ano, of the 37 uh, tons uh, produced per day by the municipality, so 11, almost 11.5 kilograms na lang ang napupunta sa disposal facility. Now, this bulk here, the biodegradable and the recycle, recyclable waste, must be composted in the case of biodegradable and recycled in the case of the recyclable. Another uh, <coughs> management strategy is, of course, uh, reduction. You know? Now, pag nakita ninyo, kung babalikan natin yung slide sa amount of waste generated, you can still identify which of those waste material can be reduced. Okay, so, <coughs> sorry. In conclusion, waste assessment characterization survey is done in order to have a realistic planned waste management in almost all its aspects. Waste minimization or reduction of source, the materials that need not be used in order not to produce waste. We know what to reuse, we know what to recycle. And then, in the recycling, meron ba tayong facility, meron ba tayong equipment? Uh, are our barangays have the materials recovery facility and do they have the equipment? Do they have the facility and equipment for the collection and transport? And then, meron ba tayong disposal facility? What are the landfill requirements? And of course, the fund requirement. All these can be answered itong lahat na almost all of the aspects uh, of uh, waste management as I, uh, uh, kasi dito sa kuan in terms of IEC dito while, while using the wax we can encourage the people what to minimize or reduce and what to recycle you know? and for the local government units uh yung kailangan nilang magtayo ng MRF, uh, procure facility and equipment for the collection and transport, construction of landfill, or the construction of the RCA, and of course, the fund requirement. So, we just started with the WACs, but all of these are being uh, answered through the data derived from our WACs. So, in summary, including part one, we have discussed what is wax and how we do wax, the methods, how do we process the data we have collected in the survey, and how do we analyze in, by discussing the significance of wax data. So, that is all for now. The additional reference is the Ecological Solid Waste Management Plan of the Municipality of Katarman, Northern Samar.